So welcome to the massive uh, open online course on multidimensional poverty. It is my privilege to be part of uh, this uh, sequence of lectures. So I have been asked to talk about uh, the policy uh, relevance of the multidimensional poverty index, or rather what has been the experience in, in terms of how the multidimensional poverty index has influenced uh, specific uh, aspects of policy making. I think it's very important, first uh, thing I will say is that it's very important that when we talk about welfare and different definitions of welfare, we are not only concerned about the measurement part, which is very important, uh, but also how uh, the measurement eventually translates into uh, different types of policies. So when we are measuring, we should be aware that in a way, the way we measure will determine the way policies uh, are implemented. So when we talk about poverty, um, we are uh, mainly concerned about three aspects of poverty, particularly when we talk about poverty uh, in the realm of policy. Three aspects of poverty. First, we care about how deep poverty is. Second, we care about how persistent poverty is over time. And finally, uh, we care about the complexity of the phenomenon of poverty. The, the people experience poverty uh, in a very complex uh, uh, manner, which means basically uh, it is a multidimensional phenomenon. One thing that I want to uh, um, highlight about the multidimensional poverty index is that if we go back to the literature and the applications of the index, it is actually one that the MPI, I mean, is one that in a way allows us to go into these three different aspects of poverty. Uh, with a specific methodology, uh, in this case could be the Alcair Foster methodology or others, we can uh, in a very organic way uh, um, understand what is the depth of poverty. In the case of the multidimensional poverty index, we can think of depth in terms of every dimension of poverty with respect to the threshold in which we have defined what it means to be poor, but it also uh, allows us to look at about depth in the sense of the number of dimensions in which uh, a, a person or an individual or a household is poor, even though this has been in the literature, it's been called breadth, but it's actually about the number of dimensions in which a person uh, is poor. If one uh, also goes into uh, the literature on chronic poverty, and I don't want to go into many details, but I think this is very important. Uh, I particularly researched with a, co a few colleagues uh, recently for the case of Brazil, and we actually found out that people, uh, empirically, that people who are multidimensionally poor uh, are also more, more likely to have been unidimensionally monetary poor in different uh, periods of time, which means the MPI also allows us to capture the persistence of poverty, not only the depth. Finally, by definition, the multidimensional poverty index is about addressing the complexity of poverty. So in a way, the richness of MPI, and with this I will move into the policy conversation, the richness of the MPI is that it allows us to look at the depth, the persistence, and the complexity of poverty. So in terms of the policy uh, applications uh, uh, of the index, so uh, in a way what we uh, want to, uh, to uh, address when we're talking about policy is first how to identify the poor, of course how to aggregate the poor in terms of measurement, but then how to coordinate different policies so we can have uh, a, a, an impact on, on the uh, welfare of specific households or individuals uh, in a way that is better than if we, without coordination, every sector, uh, for example, health, education, transport, uh, social security, independently addresses each dimension. The idea is that if we have a coordinated approach, we can have uh, an enhanced impact in terms of policy. So let me tell you the story of Mexico and Colombia. So in the case of Mexico, by law, 
it was established that poverty had to be measured uh, multidimensionally. And then that led eventually also by law to uh, the establishment of a new uh, institution in the country called uh, the National Council for the Evaluation of Social Policy that was uh, precisely um, given uh, the, um, the task to measure poverty with uh, seven different dimensions, but also to try to assess the impact of different policies uh, on those seven dimensions. That naturally led to an approach in which the Ministry of Social Development had to look at poverty in a more uh, uh, comprehensive manner and try to bring different sectors into, uh, into action collectively to see how much they could contribute uh, to the collective uh, goal of reducing multidimensional poverty. That also led to implications at the subnational level, and there are very inter interesting stories about how the index also led to healthy competition uh, among politicians that wanted to be the ones improving faster uh, the conditions of their citizens. I think the clearest example in terms of coordination is the one in Colombia. Because in that case, the commitment was actually at the presidential level. So the president of Colombia decided that there would be a specific uh, mechanism in government to address uh, multidimensional poverty composed by all uh, the different sectors that were related to the dimensions included in the measurement. So what the president did is to bring all the, minister, the, the ministers of the different sectors into this, uh, uh, to convene a monthly meeting or bi-monthly meeting, uh, um, uh, depending on the circumstances, to see how much or how fast they were moving uh, towards the target that they ha uh, had been imposed in the National Development Plan. So it's very important here that in, 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 with this coordination mechanism, for example, if I am the Minister of Health, I'm not only looking at what is uh, the um, uh, speed at which I'm achieving my goals, but I'm also concerned about how much I am contributing to the collective goal. Because if we adopt the contributions of each sector, we uh, get to the uh, national uh, reporting of the new levels of poverty. So basically, the, the goal established in the National Development Plan became a goal for the whole government, not only for the Ministry of Social Development, not only for the Ministry of Health, not even only for the president himself, but actually in this case, it was necessarily a collective uh, endeavor. And I think that uh, is a very good example of how much all the ministries got engaged and involved uh, very actively into the reduction of multidimensional poverty. And then the MPI, which was originally only one way to measure poverty in a different way, became a very powerful tool uh, for um, uh, the elimination of poverty uh, in Colombia. So MPI is not only a measurement tool, it's also a policy coordination tool. This is a second very important uh, message. Third message is uh, the MPI uh, is also uh, an instrument to strengthen governance and to uh, bring about more accountability uh, between government and citizens. Why? Uh, well, basically because all these uh, coordinated efforts of government in the case of Colombia, in the case of Mexico, we can talk about the case of Costa Rica and others. Basically, it became um, a very transparent manner in which citizens could actually hold governments accountable in terms of their ob objectives. You can always say that the same could happen with a monetary measurement of poverty, which is in principle true. However, when you have a monetary measure of poverty, if I am the government and we don't achieve the, the, the goal, I can always tell you that there were external circumstances. I can tell you, for example, that there was a slowdown in, in the economic uh, conditions in the country, in economic growth, 
I can tell you that there were issues related to inflation. I can tell you that there were issues beyond the control of the government. It is more difficult for a government to claim that there were all these external factors when we are talking about, about the delivery of very specific services. If we are talking about education, we're talking about health, we're talking about investment in infrastructure, access to water, uh, social security. Um, those are under the control by legal mandate of the government. So in that sense, the government can be, um, can be held accountable for the uh, uh, achievements or the lack of achievement in terms of those, those goals. So the MPI becomes also an instrument to strengthen uh, accountability and to enhance uh, governance uh, and eventually, if successful, to build trust between uh, uh, citizens and governments. Another interesting example is how much um, this ca has helped um, fine-tune policies uh, in terms of the territorial distribution of poverty. There are uh, examples, and, and for this, uh, it is very important to say that the MPI allows you to do that much better than a monetary measure again, because as we know, if we ca have census data or we have certain type of survey data, we can have disaggregation of these uh, different uh, aspects of poverty at, at a, a lower geographic uh, level in terms of geographical uh, um, areas, rather than when you have only income. As we know, we have the poverty mapping methodologies that allow you to estimate income, but always the level of error uh, tends to be higher, the smaller the geographical area you are dealing with. If you can use census data and you have access to these basic services, you can have a very uh, detailed map of where the, uh, um, you know, the people who are lagging behind in terms of access to these different uh, uh, services are. And if you aggregate those through, a, through the right uh, methodology uh, as a poverty index, you can actually address it as a, a well-targeted poverty elimination policy. So there are cases in Chile, there are cases certainly in, in Colombia as well, it has been the case in Mexico, and uh, as I mentioned before, the case recently in Costa Rica that has a very detailed uh, you, uh, you know, uh, map of how the budget uh, lines are linked uh, to the different aspects of the multidimensional poverty index, and also how much they are linked to a specific areas in terms of uh, geog geography. So the fact that the MPI can also be used to fine tune uh, the territorial targeting of poverty is another aspect that has been uh, used as a strength of the MPI in the policy world. I think it is very important that when we talked about uh, the relevance of moving from a monetary dimension, uh, sorry, monetary measurement of poverty to a, a multidimensional approach to the measurement of poverty, conceptually, it was a big step forward in terms of, of how we conceptualize and understand what poverty is. As I said at the beginning, it's not only about not having the certain level of income, but it's also about the depth the persistence and the complexity of poverty. So an MPI gave us this more comprehensive definition of what, what being poverty, uh, being poor means. However, uh, and this was, I could argue, understood only later, that this would also become a very important uh, um, a, a tool to improve policy, to improve the targeting of policy, to improve the coordination of policy, and to improve uh, the accountability of governments when it comes uh, to, to social policy. So given that, I think the, the full cycle of the relevance of the multidimensional poverty index can only be understood when we look at the policy implications. If the measurement doesn't change policy, it becomes only an achievement in terms of the conceptualization of poverty. But I think the real test when it comes to having an impact on the lives of a specific people is when the measurement actually changes the way in which we do policy.
And I think now there is very strong evidence that this is the case. And I think the multidimensional policy network is one example of how much the MPI has become relevant in the policy world and how much countries want to learn from other experiences and how much this can be extended so that eventually the MPI becomes really a transformational tool when we talk about development policy in general and not only about anti-poverty uh, specific policies. So I want to close by saying that um, uh, some time ago, a very well-known economist that we all respect very much, um, when criticizing the Human Development Index, uh, said that the Human Development Index turned three numbers he understood into one number he didn't understand. Uh, and that was a very strong criticism. And I think that from then, that point on, there has been always a debate between why does it matter to have this multidimensional approach to the measurement of welfare. Uh, concretely, as we know, uh, the debate that started in 2008, 2010, with the publication of the first global MPI, the discussion continued in terms of why did it matter to have all these numbers aggregated into one specific index, and whether that could create actually more confusion than uh, uh, being uh, you know, a clarifying element to understand the, uh, the phenomenon. Going beyond the conceptual uh, aspect in which, of course, we all know that it gives us a, a much uh, more nuanced uh, concept of poverty, I think the main point is in the policy uh, uh, implications of this type of measurement. I think the conclusions after looking at the policy impact of the MPI it brings a very clear message that it actually mattered to have this transition to the different conceptualization of welfare and poverty because not only because it gives us the right concept but because it has transformed the way in which policies are implemented and designed and this has an impact on the life of specific people. So thank you very much for the opportunity. I hope you enjoy um, all the uh, lectures um, and uh, you take a lot of uh, advantage from this uh, uh, massive course and uh, hopefully we will be part of uh, a conversation uh, again in the future. Thank you.